Hi, good morning, everyone. Bob Limpicu with Business and Decision. And we're going to give everyone a few minutes to connect to the webinar. So be patient, and we'll get started in just a little bit. Andy and David, I'll let you know when we're getting started. Yeah, you, uh, just start then, Bob. Whenever you feel like you think we have the audience ready, um, you just start. Sounds good. Good morning, everyone. We're just uh, we're going to wait a few minutes here just. Uh, for people just starting to dial in, so be patient with us, and we'll get the webinar started uh, in just a minute or so. Good morning, good afternoon again, everyone. This is Bob Limpicky with Business and Decision, and we're just going to give uh, uh, the group uh, another minute or so to continue to dial into the webinar. We have a fairly large group today, and we'll get started in just a little bit. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Bob Limpicky with Business and Decision. Uh, we're going to wait just uh, maybe another half minute or so for some other people to dial in, and then we'll get started with our presentation. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Bob Limpicky with Business and Decision. Uh, I think we're ready to get started here. I know we may have some people dialing in, but uh, we'll get started. We want to stay on time and uh, uh, really keep to our time limit here. So. Again, as we go through the presentation, please understand that uh, at the top of your screen, you'll see a an ask a question button. Feel free to type in a question there throughout the demonstration. Uh, what we'll do is then take those questions at the end of our presentation and answer them uh, in an order. So feel free to do that at any point in time in the presentation. And by the way, at the end of this webinar, there will be some instructions and a link for you to click on that will allow you to download a copy of the presentation. So please keep that in mind. But with that, let's get started here. I'd just like to introduce our speakers today. Hi, I'm Bob Limpicky. I'm Director of U.S. Sales uh, for our Oracle practice. I have two very high-level consultants with us today as well, Andy Hires and David Tulsaki, uh, both very strong Oracle EBS consultants. They've worked on a large number of R12 upgrades, and today they're really going to share a lot of their experience and some of the lessons learned. So we want to provide that expertise for you and add that value for you today. And our real goal today is, is to help you be more successful with your R12 upgrade. So uh, planning is a big part of that. And we want to really highlight some of these areas here that you see here, how to reduce risk in moving to R12, 
helping you understand those fundamental changes and really the, the benefits and improvement that are in R12 that you may be aware of. There's a lot of new functionality there. Make sure you take advantage of those. And a very big consideration is uh, not only preparing for this, but preparing your organization. This is typically a significant uh, a function that you have to go through. We want to make sure that you prepare your people properly as well as you prepare the project and really understanding all the factors for this type of approach. So this is what we'd like to accomplish today. And with that, I'm really going to turn this over and get really into the meat of this. Uh, turn this over to Andy Hires, who is our principal consultant, to really kick this off and get into the detail. So, Andy, feel free to jump in here. Uh, yes. Um, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Andy Hires. Thank you, Bob, for the uh, intro. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself, um, I'll give you an idea as to why we're having this seminar. Uh, I uh, have uh, been with Oracle eBusiness Suite even before it was called an eBusiness Suite. Uh, this uh, I've been working with um, its predecessors and now the eBusiness Suite for more than 20 years. And, um, you know, we as a company and me personally along with David have um, had the opportunity to um, – upgrade uh, or assist in the upgrade of a number of different uh, customers, um, Oracle customers, from 11i to 12. And really what, what we're doing in this uh, webinar, uh, we've discovered as we, as we did these uh, projects that um, we're, we're going into customers and we're, we're clients and uh, we're, we're um, asking questions and we're organizing and we're doing all things that cult consultants tend to do. And we realized that there were a number of areas that, um, you know, w maybe it would have been a lot more efficient if there was some way for some of this to have been prepared for. Understand what's going to happen, what's coming at you when we do a uh, um, an R12 uh, upgrade from an 11i environment. So here's how this webcast is going to be broken into. Um, we're going to um, basically look at it says three bullets on the screen, but the real crooks of this is that there are there are two areas of focus that we have today. Um, w one of the goals we said was to try and and make it more efficient and make it more uh, uh, this project um, more cost effective and less time consuming. So if we break this into the major two areas, uh, one will be um, you know identify uh, what you can do as a customer to become self-aware and do the uh, those things that will help you shorten the project for when those expensive consultants show up. All right, that's one thing that, that um, uh, the number of things that we have discovered or worked through in these projects that we realized could have been answered without us um, is kind of surprising. Um, then, um, that makes it much more efficient and more satisfying even for the consultants who come on board when you then can, can start thinking about and get more um, efficiency out of what, you, what happens when they come on site. So the second part of this will cover the, um, what you can expect when your partner arrives and, um, what, and along with that what happens and what you can expect when an upgrade process begins. So let's actually get in and look at some of the um, uh, key considerations. And again, this is a, um, a kind of a list or a um, an organized uh, 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 approach that uh, we've just discovered over time. Um, that you know, most of the companies when I worked um, in industry, I realized I could have answered a lot of these without a lot, without the help, or at least got gotten started on some of these without um, having to pay someone to help me do that. So here are things that you're going to look at, um, and, and you can see that list. I'm going to go into each one of these in a little more detail, um, and then kind of give you reasons why you might want to do this, and also what the benefits might be to you um, for for understanding each of these areas. So we'll jump right into see and uh, talk about what um, you know what, what do you have in your 11i environment. Um, some of the things that, that I really like to 
um, to emphasize. I mean, I'm not, not going to go over every one of these bullets. Um, you can read. I don't have to read them to you. But some of the, the areas that we've um, noticed those things that would help um, if you took the time to do them on your own would be to really understand your current business processes, uh, that, that roughly middle bullet there. Um, it, it's kind of surprising uh, the number of uh, clients we would go into to start this project and uh, find out that they don't know actually how they're using 11i and what what their business processes are that they should be applying 11i to. Now, why would you care about that? Well, if you are, um, if you you should have goals for why you're going forward to R12. Uh, I understand that there's a major goal out there right now called where Oracle's going to uh, de-support 11i um, sometime uh, in, the, in the relatively near future, meaning your m main goal might be well, all we want to do is get to R12 so we can continue the Oracle support. Other companies have other um, uh, more you know, lofty goals than that. They actually have an opportunity to take advantage of new functionality, or they might want to um, take that, this as an opportunity to do more with the e-business suite that they even have um, when it gets uh, moved into 12. Well, if you don't know or don't have your, your current business processes documented, then one of the more difficult uh, situations you're going to have is determining when you've really gotten there. Have I actually met the goal of upgrading to R12 and keeping my business running the way it was or improved on that business? If I don't know what I should be, have been, what I was doing in the past, I won't have any idea if I'm doing it that way in R12 in the future. So that, that's one of those areas that, that we found would really be of advantage to a customer before your uh, um, consulting firm on, comes on board that could um, really um, save you time and money um, and then just focus on the actual um, activities of, up, of the upgrade when your consulting firm comes on board. Um, and then, you know, to continue with that um, whole pattern here, um, how was the system turned over when you first implemented? Uh, how um, or when you did your last upgrade? How long have you had your e-business suite? Uh, have you been running e-business suite in your company? The reason that's important is um, we have gone to clients where um, we would we would be watching the the part of our um, activities is also to observe if you tell me what you do as your business process, and then we observe somebody doing something different, we have to really, you know, document that. And we're watching somebody do something, and we say, well, why are you doing that? Well, um, uh, uh, the implementation consultant told us to do that. And, and that might sound uh, uh, kind of, you know, terse or, or um, flippant, but I'm surprised at the number of times that really happened. So the, the interesting part is, um, you know, to, to when you find out that there's a, a whole series of activities you might be doing that you're doing only because you were told to do those by someone who implemented you or helped you implement. And by the way, I think I used the term right, implemented you, because you didn't participate that much in it. If you're doing just exactly this because they told you to, then perhaps you need to understand a little more um, uh, about that and be prepared, as I'm going to say later, to maybe, um, you know, um, do away with that practice or make it formal and understand why and what it contributes to your business. Again, it's something that you could actually go out and determine on your own or at least begin to determine on your own. Uh, continuing that area, um, the, the um, workarounds. Oh, by the way, that first bullet, um, David, when he comes on board, and um, me, I will talk a lot more about organization structure. Um, if you're on 11i now, I'm certain you have heard the uh, the rumor that, and it's more than a rumor, that things have changed in R12. Organization structure is clearly one of those, and we'll talk several times about that throughout this presentation. But um, things like customizations and workarounds, we'll talk about the um, customizations a little more too, um, a little bit later. But the workarounds that I find customers using tend to be both formal and informal. And I'm going to talk about the informal ones a little later as well. 
But if you if you have a system and you are doing things outside the system and then bringing them back in, or you're using other functions within the system to, to perform things that they weren't intended to do, you might want to get your arms around why you're doing that. Anything you have in 11i, there will be scripts, um, there will be patches that Oracle will have you apply in the overall process of going from 11i to 12. When you apply these, whatever you have in 11i is going to try to become part of 12 through these, through these scripts. Well, the, um, it might be important to really, <laughs> I think it's very important for you to understand how the workarounds work in 11i and will they actually be supported in 12 because some things have changed and those areas may, you may be surprised that, that they actually are not going to be supported um, by, by 12. Again, things you can do before a, co a company like us ever shows up on site. The, uh, there's no, <laughs> no way around it, folks. Change is coming. And that's what um, uh, 12 is all about, going from 11i to 12. It's um, in some cases the change is very large. In some cases the change is, is not so large, but it's it is definitely um, different than what you were doing in 11i when you move into 12. So you might want to self-examine once I had said before for you to document your business processes, or at least learn as much as you can about them. Then start asking yourself. What can change and what can't change? And in particular, you might want to know those things that are sacrosanct and can't change. Uh, and and you know, it, it's not necessarily um, a situation where um, it's, it's something in the business suite, the e-business suite, that, that can or can't change. Really, it's the process that you're working through, the activity that you do that runs your business. And of course, with the e-business suite being a, um, uh, a supporter of this. So um, uh, it, it, it's very interesting that that discussion, when it happens in front of your, um, your implementation consulting partner, the third party that you hire, um, can be very telling when you haven't figured that out in advance. I mean, no, I need that. I can't give that, but, but why do you do it? It just gets to be a very interesting discussion. The other one is the informal processes. Um, every day, um, let's take a manufacturing example lesson. Every day, the um, uh, when your uh, warehousing people come in, they um, do a an informal count. All right, it's not really done either even on the, or it might be done on the system, um, but it's done outside of normal practices that you know of. Or every day we show up, we um, informally take a, um, a status of my inventory. Where is everything? How much do I have, et cetera? What does the system think I have? Well, um, we find out when we're doing upgrades that there's a lot of these little systems that are going on that people don't know about, um, informal activities that have to happen that really are uh, germane or extremely important to your business. And as it turns out, the, um, um, it, it, these need to be moved forward because if, if you don't think about these and don't migrate them forward somehow or up, upgrade them in some way, um, you're going to miss maybe a very important set of st structures that happen in your business. So um, this is all, again, self-examination, once again, before uh, your consulting firm comes on board. We're also looking at, uh, you know, your, your resources. David is going to talk more about this later, um, uh, but it's so important that it bears repeating. Um, you're going to have to really identify um, how, along with the, with the, the you know, the way your e-business suite was uh, um, implemented in the first place, which might have been, okay, third-party company, come in, just implement it and tell us what you've got, or... Um, you are um, looking specifically at, um, you know, using, like we always recommend, your um, internal resources, your subject matter experts, your super users, I'm uh, you're familiar with that term, uh, department heads, the people who really know the business, identify them and start realizing that, you know, I might not have these folks doing their daily job as the way they used to, while the project is being done, because they're going to be focusing on this project. One of the things that, you know, things that, that, that oh, by the way, <laughs> the technical support, can't, cannot emphasize that enough. 
the upgrade process from 11i to 12 is um, a, a, um, a shared experience between business and technical. Um, Oracle will send you, well, not send you, you will go and download um, several patches and uh, to start the whole process, and that's a DBA, a, a, a um, database administrator activity. Once they're put into place, there are procedures that your um, uh, your business folks um, will need to, or your consultants will need to go through. When they're completed, then there's another DBA activity. Uh, I, Understanding that your uh, uh, DBA is going to be heavily occupied in this upgrade process um, is important for you to know now. Get that? Uh, you know, just just it's it's a fact. It has to happen. And um, so the DBA who might be doing um, expected technical business or activities uh, may not be as available as you expected. Another example here. Um, I have I have a bullet there that's a um, strictly an Oracle process manufacturing example there, but but it actually goes way further than that. Um, today there's this thing affectionately called the manufacturing accounting uh, controller. It's the it's Mac uh, we all affectionately call, and that's in 11i, and that's how you integrate from your business processes to the general ledger to the sub ledgers into the general ledger. All that goes away. And even the standard approaches of other industries, if you're a service industry, if you're a distribution company, uh, if you're a financial um, company, these um, process, the, the integration from your um, uh, 11i through to 12 to the subledger, then ultimately to the general ledger, changes to this thing called subledger accounting. Well, this, um, and, and by the way, for for uh, for certain industries like OPM, that was literally lifted out of the OPM, the Oracle Process Manufacturing set of modules, and now it's in financial modules. So whoever owned the Mac in the past or its counterpart in your industry is going to have to really have a foot in both sides, the, the financial side and the um, operational side of your business when you go to 12 because it's been moved to another area of the entire suite and it, it, it's changed quite a bit. Something for you to consider in advance, understand who owns that today and the fact that they're going to have to make some changes to their, um, um, to their life as uh, going forward. Also then, um, scope. There are only a few real, um, I'd have to say, poison pills to um, um, any project. This is not just uh, an upgrade project, but um, almost a, uh, any project I've ever worked on. One of those is called scope creep. Uh, and it's, it's um, I, I see it attempted on every project I've worked on, and I've seen, seen scope, scope uh, creep actually happen on many of those projects. What is, what is that? Well, it's, it's you make your plans, you say, okay, I have an 11i now, I'm going to upgrade to R12. My, my, the scope of this is existing modules, um, and it's my, my results, my goals will be I'm going to have an R12 that feels and looks and acts and functions like my old 11i with whatever advantage I can take of um, some new functionality in 12. You get the project started and someone comes along and says, you know what, it would really be good if I could have A, B, and C. We're doing the project anyway. Let's go out and do that, okay? Well, David's going to talk a little bit more about his experience as well in this area, but it can really uh, um, clog the, the system. You, you're not sure what um, the impact of this little, oh, it's my thing I need to do. Uh, pet project, and next thing you know, um, you've got um, service requests going to Oracle. You have people trying to understand what you're doing. It's taking time away, etc. What you really need to do is hold your scope as best you can. When you say, this is what I'm going to do, and by the way, the, the best way to, and this, again, I'm saying this is a, um, a step you can take before you, um, you have a consultant firm on, on site. So that means you un understand in your own business uh, vernacular, what am I trying to accomplish and how big is this project going to look as far as the e-business suite is concerned? Then you can present that when, the, when your consulting firm comes on site and they can work with you um, much more uh, intelligently and 
it's efficiency and dollars is what we're re really trying to save you here. What else? Oh, yes. And again, we can't go on uh, without talking about this this area. Um, there's a lot of acronyms for this. Um, every time, uh, and, and I've, I've used this term, I can't tell you for how long, Kemley's um, rice is another example of this, this style of, of um, uh, uh, function. Um, and, and I have to write it out every time just to make sure I get each one of these. It's, it's anything you've done that are special configurations, um, any extensions, modifications, things you've done that are localizations just to you or integrations that you have. Um, it, it, and it's kind of funny because you, you would say, well, you know, we know we have to understand them and document those in order to. Well, you think you do, and the customers we go into thought they did too, and when we arrive on site, we found a whole bunch they hadn't considered. You really have to kind of lift the carpet, look under it, uh, uh, so to speak, of the e-business suite to see, because some of these may have been done uh, outside of your formal system. Someone might be doing a modification or an extension that they kind of found a way to do on their own, or with the help of someone in IT, and, and it really was not documented, but it's something that they use on a regular basis. So this is really important to uh, um, the, the whole Kemley and all your uh, modifications need to be understood and start doing that before your, your, um, your consulting firm comes on board again so you, have a, you, you, you can verify what they're finding um, against what you already know. Uh, saves a lot of trouble. So same thing, we're continuing uh, with um, the Kemleys here, um, again, talking about um, integrations. Um, and, and then the, those informal processes, again, those critical business processes not directly supported by the original implementation. You have something you do that's extremely important to your company. You do it on a spreadsheet, and then you import it into um, the e-business suite. Uh, get that documented. It's really important that it be be um, understood, um, and, and and go from there. Um, okay. Next, my section is almost done here. Um, we talked. We said we were going to talk about organizations. Where again, here we have um, the the you know understand if if you're a um, uh, an 11 i customer um, outside of process manufacturing, let's say, your change is not going to be as drastic going from um, the, the 11 i to 12. It's going to feel a little closer to what's uh, happening. But an example was we just have recently gone into a customer and they had uh, uh, 445 um, organizations officially in the organization structure, and it turned out when we were finished the project, they needed seven. Well, what were all those other ones? Well, uh, over time, they added organizations for this reason, that reason. Well, um, some organizations that they had originally started, like warehouses, um, um, companies, they had actually um, sold or did away with. And what happens was they were still on the uh, in, in uh, on the e-business suite. So that last bullet, which ones are not needed and which ones, that, that, that might be the most important thing. How can you uh, pare down? Because remember, anything in 11, the, system, uh, the uh, migration is going to try and pull over into 12. If you don't need it in 11, get rid of it so it doesn't have to wind up in 12. All right, then, um, you know, establish a preliminary timeline. Do you have any... Um, uh, natural times when you're going to be down, uh, because when you when you do the cutover from 11i to 12, the system's not going to be available to people for a while. Um, that varies with industry how long that while is, but the point is that um, the the um, the the you know can, do you have a time? Uh, when, when you're doing a natural down that you could handle that. It sounds silly. Do you have a budget? Oh, of course we do. Do you have a sponsor? Oh, yeah. Well, we were surprised at the number of companies that had not figured that out yet when we came on board and we had to help them with that. Um, moving on. Right. And then um, were there anything extra that you wanted to uh, um, accomplish with the upgrade? Um, then the, um, um, you know, what, is there anything else you want to do besides just wind up on 12? Would you like to, um, to we've had customers who said, wow, 
you know, all along we've had this, this general ledger um, structure that hasn't been any fun. Uh, we've been meaning to change it. We just had another time. What an opportunity. Okay, that kind of thing. Um, you know, do you uh, – item number uh, – we, we bought three companies between the time we implemented eBusiness Suite and now. Um, is it an opportunity for us to standardize um, along with upgrading? Is it an opportunity to standardize on our, our item numbering? Um, if that's possible. And then the, that technical upgrade thing. What that's saying is we have run into a lot of companies who have um, in the past done upgrades by saying, oh, IT, do the upgrade and um, tell us what you did and then we'll get the users, have them figure it out. Okay, That's a technical upgrade. Don't do that for 12. It is much tougher. Too many things have changed. You must have your business um, or, you know, the, the people we identified before and resources have to have them involved. All right. Then this is kind of, it sounds kind of silly. Before your uh, uh, integration consultant shows up on board, go to the Oracle support website and read all the documentation on R12 upgrades you can possibly do. The reason you want to do that is Oracle doesn't push that out. And companies like us, Business and Decision, we're constantly letting them know where the um, the uh, documentation is needs improvement, so it's constantly changing. So if you read it once before, it may not be the same now. So, um, again, it doesn't get pushed to you. You don't need your consultant on site to help you read this stuff. All right, that, that ends my portion of this uh, presentation. I'm going to turn this over to David Prosaki now and let him continue with the uh, – um, take you on to the end. Thanks, Andy. Uh, I'm David Prosaki, uh, a staff consultant with uh, Business and Decision. Um, been through a couple of grades with Andy, and, uh, and uh, I'm here to talk a little bit more about the second half of this presentation. Um, we're going to finish up. Discussing the, uh, the remaining issues on what to do before your integrator arrives, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, what to do when they're actually on site with you. So, moving into it, uh, setting expectations. Um, it's very important to the success of the project that uh, everyone involved is, is on board. Um, Andy briefly mentioned this uh, in the discussion about the resources, but you know it, it's time to start thinking about what kind of role your your super users will call them, the people that uh are the most important to the you know the business side of the success of the projects, uh will be involved. Uh full time, part time, um if they're full time, who is gonna do their normal job? Uh, and we like to, you know, use the phrase that if they're not if they're not missed from their normal job then they're probably the wrong person because we really want the people who do this who will be using the system day in and day out to be the one to be the ones that are the decision makers. Um, <clears throat> so it, it's integral that the, the management decide and, and make the decision uh, in a unified way that, that they're going forward. Make that as an announcement, not so much as a discussion. Um, and people within within the company feel that they can sway the direction of the project and manipulate which way it's going to go. Uh, that really only can uh, Hurt the you know the success the, the possibility of, of, a, of a good go live um, and a good way to get everyone on board is to really uh, take a look at their needs and I mean, there's a little joke here radio station W I I F M uh, what's in it for me um, you know the more people whose needs and concerns are addressed um, in a, in a, a, that are addressed will you know it'll really help them. It will help the project establish credibility uh, moving forward. So risk, uh, I spoke briefly on resources, but, uh, you know, what in terms of, you know, their role and the, the hour, there's only so many hours in the day, uh, it's important that the company is honest about, you know, how, how thin will we be? Uh, will there be enough time for them to do their old job and, their, and the job they're doing now? Um, necessary to bring in maybe a temporary uh, employee to help do their old job or spread their their old work around some other uh, some of the people that work for them. Um, and depending on what your role in the project is, uh, you could have a very minimal role or you could have a you know a role that takes quite a bit of time, two or three meetings a day and and uh, really a lot of involvement depending on what your role is within the company and what modules are being upgraded. Um, 
documentation is a very important aspect of of uniformity moving forward. Um, many times, you know, different people within the company will feel that a certain functionality behaves two different ways. Uh, I, I like to use the, I'm not sure everyone's seen the comics uh, where, uh, you know, a person external to the company comes in and, and asks them how they would construct a, a tire swing. And there's 10 different drawings of how each department within the company would construct their, their own tire swing or how they think it should be. Well, you know, this is a similar situation. Uh, an accounting person might have a very different viewpoint than a, a manufacturing operator, how uh, production is uh, recorded as an example. Oracle support. I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, CRP process later in the presentation, but uh, we work very closely with Oracle support uh, on troubleshooting and, and really just if there's any issues, uh, they're, they're one of our, our, our key networking uh, um communication uh, avenues, and uh, if that Oracle support is lapsed, then you know, it, it really um, would advise against letting that happen. Database compatibility is something that probably should have been already figured out when you uh, bought the actual product from Oracle, so at this point, one would hope that that's been uh, already handled, but it's good to, to be aware of this. <clears throat> Moving forward with, with some more risks, um, you know, technical infrastructure, uh, you know, you need to have, you know, your IT department take a look at your storage servers and your normal servers and your, and your network connection connectivity issues um, and, and really uh, be aware of any kind of shortfalls you may have. Um, some companies have FDA validation requirements that make, that make them, uh, you know, house their old data from the 11 i system for X amount of years. Um, so you've got to really think, do you have enough space in, in your certain your storage servers to account for that? Andy spoke a little bit about this, Rice and Kemley's. Um, these are areas that many times can get swept under the rug, uh, thinking that the technical guys have it under control, but uh, it's really uh, important that this is analytically looked at and, and all, all uh, aspects of this are considered. Project management, I'll speak more on this later in the project as well, but um, without a good project manager, uh, that can really hurt, uh, hurt a project. Um, scope control, Andy, Andy also spoke about this, but the, uh, we've got a little example uh, of uh, an experience we had during an upgrade, and there was a, uh, there was a, a user that had a student specific functionality that only they knew about and they um, <clears throat> only they knew about and they asked that we work with them to change the functionality in 12 uh, it's kind of just something that was a pet peeve of hers and uh, we thought it wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be much of an issue but it turned into one and before long uh, it raised the attention of management and turned into a, ma a major showstopper so if there are issues that you want to address it's, it's important that you, you look at that from, from the very beginning and not halfway into the upgrade. Um, so this is now the point in project when you, you got when your consultants have arrived and um, this is an overview slide of what we're going to go over. Um, the first four bullets I'll talk in more detail. The fifth bullet, excuse me, um, is kind of just is, is a, really just a question so that the users understand what um, what the new uh, our 12 package really looks like. Uh, you may have customizations in 11 that uh, that will be addressed by standard functionality in 12. So um, uh, it's just something to consider. So the question to re-implement uh, or migrate. Um, there's, uh, and I'll use a, a similar example, Andy, use uh, any kind of business changes. You know, you can have warehouses or in, in a discrete situation inventory or that are no longer um, um, in use. They've been obsoleted, but for whatever reason, they're still in your system. Um, you know, if there's too much of that, it will create clutter in the upgrade process. Uh, you could have organizational changes as well. Um, an example of that would be, uh, let's say you've got a distribution uh, supply chain uh, set up, and for whatever reason, in 11, you chose not to strategically plan, uh, uh, plan for those movement of those materials, whereas in 12, you've made the decision for management that you do want to plan for those and 
uh, advanced supply chain planning might be something that would, would be something you, you would want to implement. Um, there could be there could be accounting configurations you'd like changed, moving from uh, different types of costing methods. Uh, you know, the item master is another area that has gone through quite a bit of changes, especially from an OPM side. And uh, it's important that um, take a look at that. Customizations. Uh, it's another thing that and it goes sort of in the, in the Kemley uh, or Kemley brand you know, section of this conversation, but. Um, these are often things that get swept under the rug uh, with the hope that the technical guys will, will magically remember it. Uh, if you've documented it well, then, then this should be a little bit easier to uh, take into consideration. But if not, then uh, it's something that could really come up and, and invite you if you're not careful. Uh, system data, uh, an example, if your system data is not clean, it's, it's going to cause all kinds of issues moving forward in the upgrade. Um, let's say I'm one of those upgraded orgs, you had a, uh, you had a plant that was obsoleted that had, still had a lot of the uh, inventory in it. Um, throughout the upgrade, you're going to see that inventory move and it's just going to create confusion. Um, active workarounds. An example of this we see quite a bit. Uh, you have certain users within the system that, that don't want to, uh, are pretty unaccepting of, of change, um, and they insist on using manual workarounds. You can use some plant managers who use uh, Excel and then manually import all the data back into the system. Obviously not a way that management would want to look at that. Um, so a thing to consider if you do decide to re-implement would be data conversion. Uh, FDA companies, this is usually kind of a concern for FDA validated companies, and uh, they, uh, it, it, I'll talk a little bit more about these data dish structural changes in the next few slides, but this is something to be aware of, and that's usually the main roadblock for, for re-implementing. So if any of those other uh, issues that in this slide and the slide before uh, were, were a big issue to you, uh, it's, it's wise to, to, to think about uh, re-implementing. That's kind of like clean slate as opposed to putting band-aids over something that, that might be a, a deeper problem. Last consideration on the slide, you need to make sure there are versions of 11i that uh, you cannot go directly to 12. Um, so that's something that, that the company needs to be aware of. Project management, there are uh, Obviously, you can handle this one of two ways. One, use someone with it, you know, internally, uh, or you can use someone who, um, or you can use someone who, you know, the consulting company would recommend. Um, if you do decide to use someone internally, it's important that they are uh, someone who understands both 11 and 12. Um, oftentimes, uh, that's sort of a rare thing to have internally with the company, and that's something uh, where the consulting project manager would, would offer a lot. However, if you do decide to go with a, a project manager from a consulting firm, you're going to have potential issues around them adapting to your company culture and the way you like to do business. So uh, these are just things to be aware of. Uh, this is really, on, this slide is really only geared towards OPM related customers. They, um, the organ, the database structure, uh, in 12 uh, really mimics that of, of discrete. The inventories have been merged, and uh, for all OPM companies, there's gonna, this is just something to, to note and be aware of that if you have, you know, you're gonna see major changes from an organizational entity standpoint. Um, <laughs> um, and for discrete companies, this is just a way to it's really a chance for further improvement. A little bit about CRPs. Uh, a conference room pilot is essentially uh, a practice for the real thing. Um, typically, but not always, companies choose to uh, do a, a mock, uh, an upgrade uh, at the end of a, an account period close and the beginning of opening the next one, follow one. So uh, the process, the full upgrade process usually takes about three to four days. Uh, so it, in a CRP, we would go through a mock upgrade at the beginning of the month, usually, um, and then we would have a new system, and the, the users, uh, the super users, all all parties involved, um, 
would be spending the rest of the month, usually, uh, working through testing, validating, uh, trying to find anything that needs further improvement. Um, so you do the, the idea is that you do this once a month. Um, and Oracle typically recommends that you do at least five of these. Kind of, kind of the idea that, that practice makes perfect. Um, you know, what, as you as you go through this, every time it gets a little better, and you see different scenario business scenarios that could have popped up, and and the hope is that by the sixth one and seventh one or whatever, however many you choose, it, it's it's you know finally through the machine. So at this point, I'll uh, pass it back off to Bob, and, and thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, David. Thank you, Andy. Hey, I, I know a lot to consider here. Uh, I think some, some real good expertise and experience that we were trying to share with you. And, again, these were the areas that we talked about earlier that we wanted to, to cover, uh, helping you reduce that risk, understanding all the changes in R12, and taking advantage of, of the benefits and improvements, uh, obviously preparing your organization. Uh, again, these are typically some – significant projects and going through an upgrade like this and understanding our approach moving forward. So um, we hope we covered all of those for, for, the, for you today. Um, we'll, we'll get to your questions just a little bit. I did want to just give you a, a few highlights and uh, so you understand a little of our background and our expertise. Um, we're very experienced with uh, uh, EBS in both 11i and, and 12. Uh, and, and again, lessons learned in going through multiple R12 upgrades over the last several years. Uh, there's a, we know how to avoid those pitfalls. We know how to save time, which always equates to money. And we know the different industries. So, you know, uh, depending on which industry you're in, there are some significant uh, challenges, you know, if you're a process versus a discrete manufacturer and so on. So just something to highlight. We are Oracle Platinum Partner as well, and we understand uh, really the, the whole life cycle of applications. So uh, not only do we do uh, implementations and the upgrades enhancements, we understand uh, the maintenance support. We do consulting and really managed IT services across the board. Of course, we realize ERP is not the only piece of uh, software or technology that you're running. So it's important how your upgrade is going to affect these other areas. Uh, we have a lot of experience in business intelligence, cloud and mobility. We understand how focused people are on the customer experience, uh, your ERP, e-business. In certain industries, there's some pretty key needs for regulatory compliance. So uh, this just adds to our competence in, in how – a company like ours can help you through this type of upgrade. And briefly, just a high level of business and decision. We're a fairly large organization. Uh, we have significant presence here in the U.S., three offices in North America. We are global, so that, that's very helpful if you are a, a global international company. Uh, we can provide support uh, around the globe for you. And, again, very focused on – how we can help you with uh, with your Oracle EBS upgrade and, and moving forward. So with that, um, we did want to save enough time, and I think we have uh, about 10 minutes left. We want to be uh, cognizant of your, your schedule. We want to answer some questions. Uh, there's some of our contact information. Feel free to connect with us, ask any questions afterwards as well. And... Um, we're going to jump into some questions. I'm going to answer the first question that I see here. I know several people have asked about getting a copy of the presentation. Uh, when you finish up and leave the webinar, you'll be uh, kind of uh, pointed towards, towards a link that will allow you to actually download these slides. So this way you have that, and you can review them again and certainly call us and ask, ask us any questions on them. Um, and then, Andy, I think there might be some questions uh, really right. uh, related towards you, so I'll let you jump in as well. Yeah, uh, I've got one question here. Uh, it says, um, uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to answer it, but uh, uh, how long is the typical um, 11i to R12 upgrade uh, from our perspective? Well, 
Um, I, I'm going to answer a little bit and then turn it over to David to answer a little bit as well. But um, I, the actual answer to that is there is no such animal as typical. Um, it's, it, it's determined by industry. Um, we have a lot of experience in supply chain industries, um, and, and there are um, Oracle uh, scripts that we do our work towards, meaning that we will adhere to this, the suggested uh, steps that Oracle has put together, and then we uh, round that out by uh, you know the, the CRPs that um, David was talking about, those conference room pilots. As we learn, what we'll do is um, add these um, to, to what we call run books or conductor's logs, meaning that um, uh, every company has its own culture and its own ways of doing things. So things that are special to you, you have um, you know, inventory that may um, have um, expiration dates that you want to be really careful about where other companies may not. Um, the migration may require that you do some pre-work on 11i uh, in that area, and so we'll add those steps to a run book with um, screenshots and specific steps. We'll go through then the migration process, and then we have post-migration um, steps that would be included as well. So what gets put in those sides depends on how long um, a, a project like this will take. So, um, but to give you more specific, the last one I was on took um, uh, eight months, uh, but it was a um, special case. It was a manufacturer, but it was a pharmaceutical company as well. So every step along the way, they, are, they have um, to adhere to regulatory guidelines of the FDA. So it was a slower by nature. Um, David, do you have anything you want to add to that? Uh, just this one point, and um, typically, you know, the clean, you know, I spoke a little bit about this with the amount of data, clean data you have, the cleaner your data is, or, you know, obviously quantity is a big factor here, but if you have a lot of bad information or corrupt data, um, as you go through the upgrade process, that's going to significantly slow it down. So the more cleaning up you do, the quicker it'll move along. Yeah, so that's, that's, my, that's my two cents on that. Yeah, there are these um, logs that error logs or uh, pr progress logs that automatically get generated periodically through an upgrade, and they compare what is needed in an R12 to what is going to be migrated based on what you have in 11i, and um, the Oracle's uh, highly recommends that you anything that is comes on that um, log that's called an error that you find a way to resolve, and normally it's resolve it in 11i, um, so that you don't even try to migrate it forward. So that's where some of the real project comes in. Now, there are um, systems out there, there are some software systems that suggest that we can do a migration for you just by running um, your system through this, this software package, and it comes out the other end, uh, R12 now. Well, that that there there might be some specialized areas where that will work, but I have not seen one yet where where a it's just a software system to help you move forward. Um, every company has their own uh, ways of having done things, their own implementations in in the past, and um, uh, you know data that they forgot was even sitting out there as, as David just pointed to. Again. Anything in 11i wants to move into 12 if you're doing a migration. Try to get your 11i under control so that um, 12 is that, that that process is much smoother. Okay. Um, any other questions? I don't I don't I don't see any more on the question box here. So if you have any, please uh, feel free to um, uh, enter them in now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thanks, Andy. Yeah, any questions, just hit the Ask Question button here. We'll, we'll hold on for another uh, minute or so. But, again, if, uh, if anybody out there uh, wants to have a high-level discussion with us, we'd be happy to do that. Uh, you may want to get other parts of your team just to get on a quick call. You can certainly contact me, Bob Lembicki, at the, uh, the information there. But um, today we really appreciate your time and taking out a, a piece of your day to understand this. Uh, we understand how important it is just to plan your upgrade, uh, you know, prior to getting into it. it. It's a very important step, and we wanted to give you some guidelines. So 
Again, feel free to download the slides. I think they'd be very helpful. We're certainly here for uh, uh, questions and getting on a call with you if needed. Uh, so if there's not any further, and I don't see any further questions coming in, we're going to say thank you. We appreciate you, and, and thanks from Business and Decision, and we look forward to uh, helping you in the future. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank and you, everyone, for your time. Take care now.